A long time ago, I made a video about installing Linux on my Microsoft Surface Pro 7 Plus. And while overall impressions and the usability were quite good, it had some problems. For starters, on my personal and newer models, there was no camera support, since Intel never provided any drivers for their locked-on image processing unit, short IPU. Then there's of course battery life, which took an unexpected turn by becoming worse after a few updates. And finally, there were of course some Wayland shenanigans, which made this drove choice Fedora already used by default. But all of this happened over two years ago, and I thought to myself that I should finally give you an update on my personal experiences with my Pro 7 Plus. And if the situation has improved to such a point where I can finally recommend one of these devices if you want to run Linux on them. So first of all, do I still have Linux installed or did I move back to Windows? Well honestly, despite the unsupported camera problem that I had when I initially installed it, I stayed, because I never had to use it anymore. As for the distribution, I did try out Ubuntu to see if I would like it, but eventually moved back to one of my favorite distros, Fedora. Mainly because I like having a native or default desktop experience without jumping through a bunch of hoops to uninstall Ubuntu's customizations. And of course because Fedora is one of the distributions that is officially supported by the Linux Surface project. I could have also gone with Arch, but honestly speaking Fedora fulfills all of my needs and I don't necessarily need to be bleeding edge, though Fedora is also quite up to date anyway. For my desktop environment I used Fedora's default one GNOME, because like I said in my previous video, GNOME works exceptionally well on touchscreen devices. In contrast to my desktop however, I additionally added the Dash to Dock extension, which is quite nice for a touch device, whereas I sometimes don't have a mouse with me to quickly flick into the top left corner to access my apps. Right, so let's get into the things that improved. For starters, Wayland support has matured across the board. I personally no longer suffer from the issue, whereas my touchscreen stopped responding to ex-Wayland applications, mainly Brave back then. The display is now also properly recognized as a tablet, and the rapid refresh rate support is also working, which helps to combat some animation stutters, especially when using a lower performance mode. Now to be fair, not being able to use VR art before is partially my fault, because I went with GNOME instead of KDE Plasma, but it is an improvement for a desktop environment that works really well on touchscreen devices. Another problem that initially affected both GNOME and KDE Plasma was that some applications became blurry when you used fractional scaling. You know, the values that cannot be multiplied evenly across the screen. Now Plasma managed to fix that issue a long time back, but nowadays it's something that can be applied to GNOME as well. Now there used to be some workarounds to get around this issue, like changing the font size, but it's nice that you don't need to do that anymore and keep your screen real estate while maintaining sharper images. I'm also happy to report that I no longer use any third party battery optimization tools like TLP, since I found that new Linux kernels paired with Fedora and GNOME optimizations actually yield better results in power saver mode. This has been especially noticeable with Fedora 41, since they changed the power profiles daemon to a different solution. For my personal use cases, which is mostly watching YouTube videos, browsing through social media and take some notes for my videos, I consistently get around 6-7 to seven hours of battery life, which is not bad given that I use the device all the time. And they are also dropping capacity like crazy. So that's for the good parts. Let's talk about the rest. Camera support. Now this is a topic that kind of has plagued not only Surface devices, but also many other laptops in the past. With the Linux kernel 6.10, IPO6 support for Intel cameras has been merged, and it should now be finally possible to use the cameras from a Surface Pro 7 Plus and newer. Or so many thought. The thing is that there are a couple of reports that Linux stopped working for them after the kernel update. It's an open issue and there are currently some workarounds in place in the custom kernel so that this issue doesn't apply to a regular user. Heck, I didn't even know that there was an issue until I started doing some research for this video. But even if they manage to fix that issue, I'm not so sure that this will help. See, IPU6 is not just one system that will immediately make every device that uses it work. The code that was upstreamed to the Linux kernel only included a couple of IPU6 devices and not the ones required for a Microsoft Surface. Could it still work? Maybe, but probably not. So even after more than two years, my cameras are still not working. This of course is a limitation for many and also a bit of an inconvenience in general, since we cannot use Howdy, a tool similar to Windows Hello to unlock our screen with face recognition. Another feature that used to work but is currently broken on a couple of distros is auto-rotate. 
It seems like this issue might be related to SE Linux and its policies to prevent unwanted access. Now, you can probably work around this issue, but hey, who's gonna do that? Alright, let's talk Wayland. Now, like I said before, Wayland support has matured a lot in the past couple of years, and I don't really have any issues with it anymore. However, that being said, I mainly use Wayland native applications like Firefox. If you're using a different browser or application that still uses xWayland, then in tablet mode there is still this persistent problem that the on-screen keyboard is not being launched when selecting a text field. And this can become very annoying, especially if you use it as just a tablet without any keyboard attached. Another issue that affects mostly newer devices is that Microsoft seems to have patched some things in the UEFI, preventing it from booting into Linux altogether. And it seems like not even disabling Secure Boot helps with this, and you need to roll back the version altogether. I should have also mentioned that on the majority of Microsoft Surface devices, you also need the custom Linux kernel build, since many patches or drivers aren't available out of the box yet. Now I do think that if someone goes through the lengths and install Linux on a device in this price class, it should be fairly easy to install it for them. But it is an additional step nonetheless. So where do we stand two years after my initial video? Well, so some cameras and fingerprint sensors, if your device has one, are still not working. And some distributions that use SE Linux broke auto-rotate, which should be fairly easy to fix, but it's still an issue. However, as for the rest, it's improvements all the way. As soon as you manage to install the Linux Surface kernel, you essentially have a device with an operating system and desktop experience that can be fine-tuned way better to your needs than Windows. I for once like GNOME, because it has all the features that I expect from a touchscreen-driven PC. Nowadays, paired with the new battery optimizations that don't require any tweaking anymore, the overall improvements in touch consistency and the smoothness of the desktop really make it a solid experience. Like I personally don't care about the cameras, and I would choose Linux over Windows any time. But if you really need those features, or maybe even have a newer device that doesn't even have good battery life yet, then you should really consider if it's worth it to install Linux on it, especially when there are laptops out there that can yield better results and are optimized for it. I can tell you right now that while I prefer Linux over Windows on this device, I don't really plan on getting another one in the future, simply because I don't really use it that productively. It's a fun experiment for sure, and I stuck with it all these years, so it works fine. But it's on you to decide if those sacrifices are worth it. And that's where I'll leave it. Alright, so I'm actually really interested on what you think of Linux on the Microsoft Surface. Do you have one, or maybe even a different tablet-like device that runs Linux better? Please let us know in the comments. Before I end this video, I quickly wanted to mention that if you want to support the channel and make even better videos, then please make sure to check out our membership program as well as our online shop where we are dedicated to support open source projects with every made sale. If you've liked this video, then please make sure to show it with a like and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any future Linux videos just like this one. Thank you so much for watching and all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are. I'll see you around.